Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Podcast on D Shot. Um, my next guest is in his third season leading the softball program at Kimberly. Uh, I think he's had 31 wins in, in his first two years as head coach, and that is Kimberly softball coach Chad Mix. Uh, Chad, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having us. Or me. Um, so let's just start with your coaching background. Uh, how did you kind of get into coaching softball? And then um, how, how did was how much did that start with kind of playing? Obviously, you played on the on some like um, men's fast pitch teams with guys like Mark Mark Hersfeld and Steve Meredith. Yeah, I think I got tricked into coaching uh, softball. I, w- I was playing, and someone's like, "Hey, you have a kid that, that can play?" And I said, "Yeah, I want my daughter could play. She's only six, but." She could play, and and then it turned into well, we need a coach. Um, but I'm I'm glad they did because uh, I I really enjoy it. I um I coached um, you know that youth softball, and I ran the Cardinal youth softball in Kimberly for about ten years, and I also was an assistant coach at at Kimberly, um, you know, for eight ten years, something like that before uh, before I came here. So so that's how I got started with coaching. Um, remind me what your, your job is outside of coaching. I know you you have another job outside of coaching and kind of, how does that help relate to softball? Well, I, um, I, I'm a marketing director and I work for a phone company called Nervado who is, um, up North more like by Lake Superior, Duluth Superior and surrounding areas. Um, and I don't know how it helps me coach softball other than it, you know, it gives me the flexibility to be able to do it. You know, it's really hard. I think for people today to leave work um, to get to practices and get to games over the course of the season. So I'm fortunate that I'm one of those that has the flexibility. Okay. Um, talk about those relationships. Obviously, you know, you've known Tim Rarig, the Kakana coach for years. Obviously, we, um, I hit on Steve Meredith a little bit. Just talk about those friendships that with those guys that you've had in the past. Um, and does that help add to the rivalry in um, between the softball programs with Kimberly and Kakana? Yeah, so I've uh, played with Bill Huss, and I played with Bill Huss's brother, assistant coach, you know, at Kakana has been for a long time. Same with Steve. And um, I was introduced to those guys uh, or introduced to Tim, you know, through those guys, as well as coaching, you know, being an assistant and helping with Kimberly and in the first go around um, at at the high school. So, you know, I've known them for a long time. I consider all three of them friends. I I have a lot of respect for everything they've done and the hard work they do. Um, and I think, you know, I'm not sure what they would say, but I think it contributes to the rivalry, right? Kimberly and Kakana have a rivalry any, anyway, and it's a good one, right? It's, mm. it's cool, and I think the kids um, enjoy the competition and want to want to beat each other, right? But And, and although, um, you know, I'm, it's not the only thing on my mind or anything, Kakana is the best softball program out there. So... I certainly want to beat them and I certainly want to keep up with them. Right. Because my peers, Tim, Bill, um, Steve, right. They've done such a good job. You know, I think we're chasing them down. And so for me, it adds to the rivalry for sure. Um, One of the things that was interesting last year, I know you were at state last year, um, your two daughters play for new London. Um, Talk about kind of, obviously they got one more year left. So obviously um, how do you kind of manage being the Kimberly coach and then still kind of being the keep tabs on on their year? Um, and then also, what did it? Obviously, you guys played the indoor game last year. Was it against New London? So what did it? What was it like going against coaching against your daughters? Well, um, yeah, it, it's hard a, a little bit to not be there to watch every one of their games, right? Um, you know, I try to make up for that by you know, just having a good softball relationship with the girls, the, which I've always had, right? We we talk about softball, we talk about their program, our program, other kids that are great, you know, travel teams that are doing well, big upsets and that kind of thing. And I, and I try to talk to them after practice, right? Without, without really talking to them about the ins and outs of the practice, just how's it going? What happened? You know, what do you got to work on? And, and obviously we've, 
worked on softball together since they were little kids. So, you know, the way I do it is try to make as many things as I can, which isn't very many, um, but be involved still, right? So I'm always talking girls about what's happening and and that's true of all their sports although basketball i can make all their games right so it's a little different with softball um what was the second part of that question i'm sorry oh the indoor game last year that you guys played i think that was against new london if i'm correct yeah. um and what was that experience like having to coach be the, the opposing head coach against them well, I thought it was great. I, I didn't really have too much of a concern. You know, I coached m many of the New London girls um, growing up as they were growing up and in my travel program that I had prior. And so, um, yeah, it was fun to just see him and smile and laugh and talk with the kids. Um, you know, so it really wasn't a big deal. I, I They're trying to beat me. I was trying to beat them. Um, and I think we've just been a, a softball family long enough with coaches that, you know, there's been times throughout that I played against my own kids and um, I just look at it as fun. It's never been a, been a bad thing. Although I think Kenna got a little mad at me when I pitch and uh, was relaying it to the batter. So I thought, well, for the sake of the family, I better, I better not pick her pitches anymore. So I stopped that. <laughs> Um, you talk about that indoor um, facility. Obviously, you guys have one. Kakana has one. I forget who has the bigger one. Um, I know I talked to Tim Rarig um, shortly after I moved here um, about about having that. Talk about kind of how that helps with kind of practices um, and open gyms during the winter, and then how much does it kind of add to the rivalry that both of you guys have have those indoor facilities? Well, I think one of the reasons that sports are so competitive in Kimberly and Kakana is that everything is kind of competitive. They want to be the best. And that includes the best facilities and the best school and the best academics, as well as the best sports. And I think Kimberly feels that same way, um, that we're always trying to lead, right? We're always trying to elevate where we are and get better at everything that we do. And I think that's why you see that Kimberly and Kakana both have these outstanding facilities. Um, there's no doubt that it's a benefit, right? You know, I mean, when I coached in Kimberly in the past, we had a ton of success coaching out of the gym. So you can be a winner with whatever you have, right? But the facility that we have in Kimberly lets us, it allows us to do so much more. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just like being outside, but we don't have to deal with the weather. So it's, it's really, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of space. There's no limitations in, in what we can do, whether it's outfield or infield. And, you know, we can break into so many more areas and manage the practice so that, you know, every minute is maximized. So I think it's a definite advantage, you know, right now, because we have lacrosse boys and girls, which is a wonderful thing at Kimberly, we lose some of that time in the indoor. We, we actually have some practices in the gym. And it's kind of like, oh, what a bummer. But we have a wonderful gym, too. And we, we can get things done in there as well. But the facility, I mean, who wouldn't want it? It's, it's remarkable. Yeah, kind of um, being from Kenosha, I know there's no Kenosha teams that have the the indoor facility. I mean, probably they should. I mean, they, have, they built a random gym. Um, when I was graduating high school, um, that um, maybe could, that they did like obviously open gyms for baseball and softball in, but they don't have like the turf facility. Um, they also didn't have the funny thing about my my high school. Um, we had our high school graduation in our rivals gym because <laughs> yours was too small. Yes. We ended up having to have it when I was in high school at Tremper. We had it at Bradford, and then I think it moved over to ITA. Now they do it right where they they have the high school graduation on, I think, the football field. Oh, sure. So, yeah. Um, uh, favorite soft – any, like, favorite softball moments that you – or any favorite softball or baseball moments that you would say maybe that's your favorite baseball or softball moment that you've uh, seen live? Um, well, I don't, I mean, I, there's just so many, um, 
both both playing and you know growing up being a fan of baseball etc but the thing that came to mind when you asked me that and whether this is my favorite or not i don't know um but it's one of them uh you know, we, we, and, and this is just my own team, right? I was coaching uh, my travel team in the, um, in, in the uh, PGF national tournament. We we're playing to get to the final day. So I guess that's probably like the top eight or something out of a hundred teams in our age category. And um, we we're up in the bottom of the seventh by a run against a team that had beat us a couple times earlier that year. And they let off. Uh, with a ball to the fence and and we made a perfect relay um, to get the out, oh, which was a great play. And I relays are one of my favorite plays in baseball and softball. But what sticks out in my mind is the most, and I still have pictures of this, is just how excited our team was. You know, there's a the girl at third base jumped off the ground about two and a half feet, it seemed, and was just, you know, excited and and I looked in the stands and, you know, usually the college coaches that are scouting have no reaction because they're not rooting for a team. They were even cheering because it was such an exciting game. Um, and just that excitement of it sticks out in my head, you know, where that's the reason you play is to have that kind of fun and be in those moments and make the plays. And I was just, just the girls being that happy was kind of a, rewarding thing for me okay um if i had to say softball i mean there's probably a bunch of brewers moments that i could probably say too but like i i want to tell this story because I, and you'll probably kind of laugh at it um so when i was in college i i was kind of the jack of all trades type of journalist type, uh, major um where i did tv and radio uh, play by play and color commentary every once in a while. I wrote for the Royal Purple, which is the student paper at Whitewater. But here's the here here would be my my uh, interesting softball story that I don't know if I've actually told you. So um, we had a radio practicum at Whitewater, and uh, every year they have like a fundraiser type thing. They called it Fun Drive um, when I was in school. And I think they, I don't, I think they might call it Edge Fest. I don't know if it still exists anymore, where they'll have like music acts at one of the Whitewater bars and some other things during the weeks, during the week. Um, and one of them was to do the dunk tank. So I thought, you know, I know a lot of people at Whitewater. You know, I think they'd get a kick, get a kick out of that, maybe trying to get me out of the in the dunk tank. Um, so I did that for an hour. Went then went back to um, my where I lived showered went to class was still freezing um then we had a double header ironically against oshkosh um for uww tv which was i think the first game was a close game i think two to one or something like that i'd have to check but i broadcasted the play did uh back and forth play by play in the second game, and it was a 14-11, 14-10 game. Morgan Krish had a ton, had maybe one or two home runs. Sammy Seaman had a three run home run. Um, and I remember do it, be, doing that game off um, hours after doing a dunk tank at Whitewater. So that's there, good. there, there's a softball story for you. <laughs> that's fun. Well, that's good. I think, you know, like, just like mine, you know, I could think of professional plays, but it's the ones that just stick out in your head for certain reasons, right? Yours yeah. could be dunk tank. Mine because the kids were so excited. Um, but, yeah. That's, yeah, that's- I can't I can't say the I, – I, I've shown you the Kate Catino wall grab that Whitewater had. I did not see that live. I was working a pizza delivery job during that time and, and didn't see it live. But, like, I can say – with my college time, it's it's insane because I saw two Sports Center top plays live in person in college that involved White Waters, the Cordell Young coast to coast, Tyus Edney like game winning layup to win the national championship against Duncan Robinson, who plays for the Heat, and then a girl hit two buzzer beaters. Uh, well, Cordell's shot was got the amount four point eight, four point nine, took it got it to go with 0.9 on the clock. The other one was uh, a girl hit two buzzer beaters in one game. They were down by 12 in the national semifinals. Hadn't hit threes for 37 plus minutes. And then uh, a girl named Mary Merg, who's now the head coach at Tosa East, she had a three to send it in overtime at the buzzer. And 
icing on the cake was she had a floater in overtime to win it at the buzzer and was a top play on Sports Center and got a knock on her door at two in the morning saying she was on Sports Center. So those are two definitely ones um, on top of all the whitewater football success that was there when I was in school too. So um, um, I was going to hit on, um, lat, you know, last year you guys were 19 and nine. Um, you guys, um, lose some players to, um, some, co- you have college players like Lily Hurt, um, Josie Hammonds at Whitewater. Um, you got Aaliyah Buss. You got, you lost Jada Nelson from last year's team. Um, I looked up, you have all your pitching from last year is gone. So just let's talk about kind of thoughts on last year. Obviously, I know you pushed uh, um, Kakana to the brink a couple times. Um, just let's talk about last year and just some overall thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I thought we overperformed last year, and that's not um, anything saying that the kids aren't great kids. Obviously, we had a really good team to – to win um, that many games and with the schedule that we had, Um, you know, lots of folks kind of said we had the toughest schedule in the state. I don't know that there's some sort of RPI uh, tracking or not, but I know that we tried to play all the, as many of the top 10 teams as we could. And we played quite a few of them. Um, So certainly we could have had a better record if we scheduled lighter, but we're just, that's just not in our DNA. Right. Um, so I thought we had an outstanding year. You know, I, I thought our kids were fantastic. Um, I thought we were right there to play with the best teams. Um, I would say that generally they kind of got the better of us. You know, they beat us, you know, the best teams would beat us by a run or two or three, but, um, you know, we, we were very competitive and if we were in a different sectional, who knows, we maybe could have made it to state. Um, but we're in one of the best sectionals, if not the best and, you got to beat the best to get there, right? But I thought we had a great year. We lost seven kids, six of them who played all year and started, but the seventh one would have Megan McGinnis if she wasn't hurt. Um, so, yeah, we, we lost a lot. Uh, we lost a lot of um, just good quality softball players and, and you know, leaders of, of our team. But, um, but I still think we're in pretty good shape moving forward this year. But, yeah, last year I, I was really happy with. I thought we came together um, and type of year that, you know, we expect to have at, at Kimberly. And, and we can always get better. But I thought our kids performed well, even overperformed, considering the schedule that we played. I mean, it was a tough schedule. We played Superior. We played Preble. We played Point. We played Kikana twice. Oshkosh West twice. I mean, those are all top top ten teams. A um, couple of games that stuck out st- stood out last year. Um, I'm trying to think. It was an extra inning. Was it a four? Remind me what one was the long extra inning game? Well, we went into a bunch of extra inning games last year. I mean, the game though that seems to stick out in everybody's mind is the one we lost in Kakana. Um, you know, we, we were up one to zero in the bottom of the seventh. So I guess we were threatening their streak um, and they tied it. And then we went into extra innings. Was that the one where you were arguing the safe, the outer safe call? I don't think so. No, I know which one was, I'm trying to, there, there was some call that you were kind of, or I don't know if it was you or it was, if it was Tim. Oh, Tim was arguing that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because we threw the girl out at home, they, yeah. they were com- they were coming to score uh, to win the game in regulation in seven innings, but we threw the girl out at home. Yes, yeah, and Tim was arguing it. Yes, yep, yep. Um, because I was thinking the other one I was thinking of wasn't there a fourteen inning? Yeah, there was a fourteen inning against. Um, was that against Fond du Lac? Maybe I think. Yeah, I think it might have been against Fond du Lac that we, we ended up winning. Um, in all reality, they probably should have beat us in seven innings, um, but kind of let the door open in the seventh, and then it went a ways. We, we also went to extra innings against Point, but I know that wasn't 14 innings. Um, and we went extra innings against uh, Hortonville as well. Yeah, and it might have been the 
So I'm trying to think if that was the game that, um, yeah, you guys were, yeah, that had to be, that had to be the day that Craig Gall had his polka concert. And I, and I was like, oh, dang, the oh, you guys had won. It, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think it was against Find the Lack. Yep. Yep. It says, uh, that was nine innings, right? Hey, yeah. my, I'm not, I don't remember exactly. Okay. I just had the schedule. Yeah. Um, as we kind of talk about, you talked about kind of some of the the players that you lost last year. Just talk about like what's kind of coming back this year. I'll see you have two hitters that had thirty one hits, um, last year and Gerard and Hermes. You got Paige Weingard coming back as well. Just kind of talk about what's coming back this year. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, we you mentioned Sophie and Sophie, Hermes and Gerard. Um, they're our middle, so our our second and shortstop come back and. You know, there's a lot of good players out there. Don't get me wrong, but they they have to be one of the top middles in in the state. Um, two excellent softball players, so that's great. Shores up the middle. Paige um, Paige Weingard and Addie Parrish uh, both started for us last year. Played quite a bit in the outfield, and then Navea um, will be the catcher, and and she caught you know some last year. Of course, Lily Hurt was our main catcher, but Navea was a freshman. And um, she, Devea caught quite a few games, including a playoff game. And so, you know, our intent was to get her the experience for, for this year and beyond. So, so those are the kids that are coming back, um, which is, you know, obviously a, a great, a great start, but we also have a lot of holes to fill. You talk about those holes to fill um, as I'm looking at the pitching um, from last year. Good pitching from last year, under three earned run average from most of your pitching. Um, a lot of that gone. Josie Hammond, nine nine and five last year. Now at, at Whitewater, go Hawks. Um, and then Aaliyah Buss was 8 no last year. Those were 17 of your 19 wins. So, like, how do you go about and replacing that? Who's going to um, step up in the pitching rotation? Yeah, I don't know. Um... I don't know if we can replace it immediately, um, but but hopefully we can. Um, but we do we do have some good prospects for sure. We have a freshman that's coming in, Paige Shrek, who you know certainly shows a lot of potential. Um, it's it's maybe raw potential at the moment, but still probably good enough to win games. And her ceiling is really high, so I'm I'm really looking forward to her. We have Belle Alstead. Um, you know, her dad played. She's been playing travel. She's a very good player. Her sister was a great player for Kimberly. Um, you know, I think Belle has is the same, right? Kind of raw talent, but really super high upside, and I think is positioned to win games today. And then we also have Zoe Thayer, who did a, quite a bit of pitching on JV last year, and so did Belle. Um, uh, yeah, I'm seeing she had one hit last year. Yeah, she she might have played varsity a couple of games. Pro- probably only got to bat a couple of times, but had one hit. So very good player, you know. And I think those three, um, you know, right now are are scheduled to, to run out our pitching. But we also have a couple of kids that uh, we're going to pitch. Uh, I think they may be able to, you know, earn more games. Right. So so we. I think we're a little bit raw, but I think in terms of talent, but I think our upside is really high. They're working really hard to try to develop their pitches and get a little better. Um, you're kind of cutting in and out there. Oh, sorry. Um, so, like, what were you kind of saying? Yeah, I was just saying that we, we, besides the three kids that I mentioned, we have three other kids that will probably do some pitching on varsity. And, you know, depending on the result, they may take more – so uh, I we, we, so, we have six pitchers. I I think so a lot. Lots of pictures of him wearing a boot. It'll just de- depend on how we develop, right? Okay. And beyond. Okay. Um. Thoughts on the your? Let's start with like expectations for this season and expectations of the conference. Obviously, Kakana, um, has won this the state championship the last three seasons. Um, they have the 81-game win streak. 
Um, one of the Oshkosh teams, I think, went to um, state last year as well. Just kind of thoughts on the conference. I think the conference is really good. Um, you know, I think there's a little bit like Kimberly where there's been some turnover with teams. Although some teams didn't have very much, but I think it is be really competitive. You know, I think Kakan is obviously the team. But, you know, find a lack of good team. Oshkosh North is a football team. I was in last year, but I think you'll start to see here. It's just a good time. So it's going to be a battle. Um, okay. So you were just saying that Fondy and what Osh- Oshkosh West? Oshkosh North. You know, Oshkosh North. Uh, conference, I think. Uh, I, I think they at the top. Yeah, you were cutting out. <laughs> I, I I wonder if you have bad signal because I have full box. Uh, oh, okay. So maybe. I was just saying that, you know, I think the conference is pretty tough. And I think that some teams that maybe the records don't show fantastic because of the conference, like Fond du Lac or I think they're going to be challenging teams. Okay. And um, I left Nina out. Nina's going to be one of the best teams in the conference, I think. Okay. Um, Thoughts on the schedule? I know you know Preble was playing Kakana last year at the in the sectional final. Um, you got a couple of uh, Kenosha area teams in some tournaments um, with um, Bradford, who kind of po- who kind of pushed uh, Kakana to the brink last year um, with Stosa Central. Um, did you ever have to play with Stosa Central in any of those state championship games? Yeah, Kim, Kimberly did. I I had left coaching it went that year that they went to state and played in the okay. state, but I had coached all those kids. Yeah. Okay. Just thought of bringing it up. Um. So just thoughts on kind of the schedule this year and um, what it means obviously to play maybe you know, in addition to obviously Kakana and and those teams in your conference to play some of those those other teams. Well, I think Bradford and West Coast Central are really good teams. Um, and I, I try to schedule as hard as I possibly can. So, you know, we're, we're in our scrimmages against freedom who won state at D2, two, two, three, all. So very good team, even though it's D2, um, you know, we're, we're playing out in a tournament with, in, with points. Um, we're going to probably play point and then whoever is coming trouble. So obviously really good teams there. And then we're in the Chippewa Falls turn. You know, Falls themselves is a wonderful program and a really good team. But every there's pretty hard. So, you know, we're going who we get at the end, who knows? But you know, we know we're gonna get challenged and we're gonna be playing some of the best teams. So our schedule but by design. Okay. Um I was kind of jumping around, but obviously Brewer Brewers or Cubs fan. Brewers. Brewers? Okay, so expectations of the Brewers this year? I have no idea, to be honest with you. I mean, I thought last year they were a fantastic team. I, I thought they were right there. I know they, you know, in baseball, there's always some ups and downs. I don't know what to expect coaching, or how much that matters, bringing the team together, but I think they've got the team. I think, I, I, I really think they're a playoff team and, and can um, to get to the World Series, you know, it's too, but they, and they've been doing it. Definitely okay. not a Cubs fan. I'm not either. I'm probably <laughs> as diehard Brewers as it can get. You never know. You never know in Wisconsin. My my hometown is is so split down the middle in terms of Brewers and Cubs fans and all of that and Packers and Bears because it's it's like it's the the middle between it's kind of like the middle point between Green Bay and and Chicago. So, <laughs> I uh, I don't have as much time to watch them as I would like. You know, I certainly keep up and watch some games, but I I don't I just really don't have as much time to watch them as I as I once did with coaching and kids playing and travel ball in the summer and everything else. But um, but definitely a 
not not a Cubs fan. So okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Coach, for joining me. Good luck this season, and um, go Papermakers. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. We'll see you at the park this. Time. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. -bye.